Hey guys, welcome back to the social work race. Yes, interesting topic today. Before we get to it, I just want to thank you for turning up, supporting the show, and 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 contributing as well. Some of you listeners are actually contributors to the show. I appreciate you. Want you back. Uh, I don't think anyone should join this show. If you've ever been interviewed on this show, you owe me a round two because you're the best. So I want to thank you for 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 joining and contributing. <clears throat> and the listeners, thank you for sharing, listening. It's helpful. Um, and if you want to contact with questions and or answers, listen. The social work race at gmail.com. Just hit that up and we can talk. So thank you again. And and today, oh <laughs> uh, you're you're probably because I have this way of just seeing the relevance of a wide range of topics to address as frontliners. Interestingly, working in children and families, there are issues that we see in the news that, you know, a wide range of issues in the news that are just relevant to working with children and families. Um, we, I work primarily with adolescents and families. Yes, it's a tough job. I have a great team. Everyone around me is great, great support. I'm blessed like that. What on earth does the issue of the story of the Oscars and Will Smith, what does that have to do with anything to do with um, working on the front line? Well, I'm talking to social workers now. All you students out there, please listen up. Because this is for us. This is for you. Doesn't matter what your profession is. This is there's something to learn here. Do you know what I mean? Before we go into it, listen to this real brief clip. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Get my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Mm. I'm telling you there's a lot of relevance here there's a lot of there's there's always a message in a message you know there's always something to learn from what we see Um, the first thing I want to say is this when I, I think the first lesson I learned in uni or the first thing that we were kind of really taught for practice was that we were advocates I never realised that when I first became a social worker yeah I'm working for young people working with young people in youth justice but I guess a social worker the job the role is more diverse and in a strange way we are all things to all people in a sense or we, we that, that's what people that's what sometimes service users take uh, feel about us is that we are there to just solve problems which is really what we're there for but um, when you get down to it we're not one of the things that we have to be is an advocate for people who cannot speak for themselves or an advocate for justice Um, not that this is related directly I don't want to mix the topics too much but something that came to mind was this and you can you can get it on Netflix now, Jimmy Savile. Um, some of you may or may not know him, but he was a, a feature of my childhood on TV. I guess when you're growing up and there's only four channels on TV, then whoever appears on TV, you're gonna know them, right? And Jimmy Savile was a great feature, Top of the Pops and all these kiddie shows. He was a great figure in British society. Jimmy Savile was well known by everyone. If you were growing up in 70s, 80s, you would know this guy. And obviously he's died quite a few years now. 
Um, but interestingly, the thing about J- Jimmy Savile is that he, we know him to, we know of him that he was a paedophile. But interestingly, it's how he had access to young people and children because he used to raise money for charity and he did really well in raising money for charity as a public figure. And he used to raise money, especially for disabled kids, children who were disadvantaged. He was, uh, how can I say, he was moving mad on the paedophilia. So he had access to these kids and people would give him keys to hospitals. He could turn up at any time and he would be sexually abusing these kids. Sick children, children who are at the end of life or children who are disabled children in care he had access and the documentary doc, I said it's on Netflix now there is one on YouTube which is a really good one I don't know if this one's different I haven't watched it yet but I can't wait because I like to see how people perceive people uh, people in positions of power and so he, him having access to them the question that keeps being raised is how did he get access to all these kids and why was it that when he was reported back in the day nobody said anything this is where it's going. It's not just Jimmy Savile, but because he's current and he's on the tip of my tongue. When he was abusing kids, people were people were coming forward, but they were brushed under the carpet. How did he get access to these children? Yes, because he was supported in his work, in his evil, of um, in, in having access to children. But because he was so big, People in positions of authority and who were entrusted into care of these of these professionals, these carers, these representatives of charity and organizations, they were afraid to touch him. They were afraid to accuse him. These accusations were constantly flowing. Jimmy Savile was aware of it, but he felt he was too big. What's Will Smith got to do with this? Nothing to do with pedophilia. Absolutely not. Um, Will Smith did something wrong before I go into how wrong I, I want to say Will Smith has made a series of I think it's on Netflix as well I think he's made a series of um, documentaries that are mind blowing I think the best okay um, he's he's also approached his career from a very interesting angle outside of his acting career being one of the most talented guys in in Hollywood, right? Versatile. Um, he's he uh, and, and he's and he and his wife are very insightful. I don't agree with everything they think and say. I don't need to, but I think they're very insightful. I think they've given us something very new. The red table. I don't agree with probably half what goes on there, but I like the fact that it's a red table and it's a place of transparency with family. I think that's powerful. I think Will has kind of opened up um, the new the need to go deeper, and he's very much able to articulate by doing different things to help people be better than what they are. For people to do something new with their skills and talent, and to explore areas of fear and doubt, um, dark areas of people's lives, to so just say, "Well, let's go in there," and he has faced his fears. I like that he's been honest about it and he's done a range of shows and he did a reunion the other day and he apologised to one of the pre- uh, previous um, stars of the show, um, the, the Belle show. Um, I think he's just caused me to reflect a lot. So I think Will Smith is great. He's unique. Um, he's been a great guy and he's a family man. Um all the other stuff that you know we question about him in terms of what he's been doing, I don't really care. It's none of my business. Even if he puts it out of there, it's not so much my business. So with Will Smith, I like him because he's done things differently and he's done it without the cuss words and he's done it without promoting stuff that we're not all about as humans, you know, not conducive for humanity. He's been great and he slipped up. Yes, he did. Now, man, how deep can I go? Will Smith smack someone on live TV it was seen and nothing was done about it so much so that he was able to go up and get his award cry tears 
that's not okay that's not okay because children in our education system and I could tell you that in London it's for real if one of our boys especially one of our black boys hits another pupil in the way that Will Smith did there's a very high chance that they'll be kicked out of school you see the playing field is not equal I don't care what your position is but the playing field is not equal a lot of people were watching this and the question is where were the security why was he not arrested with or without Chris Rock's desire to press charges he should have been prosecuted he should have been at least arrested but he was allowed to go up and get his award the only reason why in my opinion that the Oscars took it away from him is because they've had to negotiate how they're going to navigate making a bad decision and again Will Smith is one of those celebrities that is far bigger than another he's one of those at the top of the tree of it all And if one of our boys did that, he'd have been sent to another school. And that school would not have been a mainstream school. It would be a pupil referral unit, which is a fast track into crime. And when children are fast tracked into crime and then exploitation, uh, then they're criminalized. And they pay for that for the rest of their lives. Chris Rock was not protected assaulted live on TV and not protected and no apology Uh, my, my advice to you is this and especially for social workers representing their young people black or white Never let someone be too big to be touched, questioned or challenged about what they're doing for or against your child, your young person, your service user, your adult. Don't think that anyone's title is too big for you to challenge. Because if you see injustice, respectfully challenge it. Respectfully face it. Because that's our job. Um, Society will fail in various areas. And if live TV um, if the Oscars with all the security that they have and all that they stand for in terms of equality um, and equity if they stand for that and they have failed at their first hurdle don't think that we as social workers cannot fail in the same way there is there should be and I say this (laughs) I say this to you as a human being there should be no title and no part of the hierarchy that you cannot defend your young person with with all you have society may fail but we do not need to Injustice must not be tolerated by any parent, any colleague, any police officer, any met chief, any head of service or any any manager. We have to protect the integrity of what we're representing here. Will Swift, Will, Will, Will Swift, Will Smith, I love you, but you did wrong and you got away with it. my boys and my young people do not get away with it and on that basis we have to defend them I I remember working on a case where I was trying to stop a child from being excluded from school for something I felt that was really unfair and I really gave it to the panel I really gave it to them as best I could I did not get the justice I think was deserved I think yes I think there was a level of discrimination there and prejudice but I did my best and so 
justice and uh, and equity won't always be achieved, but it must be fought for, and at all odds must be protected. Um, so that's my word to you. Um, hopefully, that is encouraging. Um, do you know what? I'll, I'll add this on. I didn't plan this. It's not in the script. I'm looking at a screen. Um, but I can say I, I know people who have experienced injustice and I can tell you that I have as, as, as well in various ways. And in some ways, it's probably, you could more or less say it's made me a better person because I pulled through. I don't know if you know what I mean. I pulled through on the other side. I, I made it to the other side of injustice. Um, but a lot of people don't some people do not make it on the other side of injustice and, and, and what's even worse is that some people pass on their sense of injustice not as something that's you can work with but as something that destroys and so the, the fruits of injustice is you know when we watch it I think there was a saying that says Worse than those who commit injustice are those who stand by and say nothing. That they they're the worst offenders. When they watch, you know, sometimes you'll see people um, committing some kind of serious antisocial behavior in public, and there are so many people just standing there watching. It's like we need people to step forward. I know it's a risk, but we need people to step forward and say no. That can't be tolerated here. We need that in society because it sends a message to them and it sends a message to our children that they're safe. Now, not too long ago, 30 years ago, a lot of communities were not protected in England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. Rather, we knew that we were not protected and so I'm one of the lucky ones where I can see myself on the other side of it and teach my children how to respond to injustice and not to exact it either. A lot of families don't get to do that. Not everyone has the tools. Luck or bad luck has caused them to just turn the other way and not really address it. And I'm just encouraging you to, when you see it, you stand up for it. When you're, on, when you're in strategy meetings or core group meetings uh, or child protection reviews, um, speak the truth and stand up for your family. Um, I've been in reviews where people have been putting down the, the family in ways that I don't agree with. And I say, no, 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 no. That's not my experience. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter who they are. Speak up for them. All right, I'm ranting now. Thank you for listening. Pass this on. Yeah pass this on because somebody needs to hear it and if you want to get in contact with me it's the social work race at gmail.com take care of yourself